Good afternoon, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You can be seated, and when you're seated, please state the full name and spell your last name for the record. I'm Dr. Yuri Boyka. Last name B O I K O. And uh, good afternoon, Dr. Boyka. Good afternoon. Uh, what is your occupation, sir? I'm associate medical examiner in Broward County Medical Examiner Office. Okay. And how long have you been so employed? Twelve years. What What is your education? I received my MD PhD in Ukraine. Came to USA in 1994 has additional education here, like residency in general pathology for four years and fellowship for one year in Harris County Medical Examiner Office in Houston. After that, I was working as associate medical examiner in Charleston, West Virginia for two years. And from 2008, I working here in Broward County. Okay. Um, what is... Um for, what is pathology? Pathology is science which determines uh, cause of uh, disease in general. And what is forensic pathology? Forensic pathology is public. Forensic means public and forensic pathology is determined cause and manner of death to present it in the court. Okay. Uh, are you a diplomat in anything? Yes. I am board certified in general pathology, board certified in forensic pathology, and I have medical license in the state of Florida. And how long have you had a medical license in the state of Florida? From 2008. What is an autopsy? Autopsy is examination of the body. We have external examination of the body, and autopsy is internal examination of the body to determine cause and manner of this. And how many autopsy have you performed in your career? In, in total, approximately 4,000. And how many uh, of those autopsies that you performed, doctor, were you able to determine the cause of death? All of them. It's and, my purpose. And those autopsies that you performed, how many uh, were caused by gunshot wounds? Approximately 200. Have you ever been qualified uh, as an expert in a court of record in forensic pathology? Yes. How many times? All these 200 times when I present in the court. And in what courts? Here in Broward County and in West Virginia. Okay. The, um, let me call your attention to uh, February the 15th, which was a Thursday, 2018. Did you uh, have occasion uh, to be in your office? Yes. And uh, were you called upon to do uh, or perform an autopsy on one Martin Duque Aquiano? Yes. And did you do that? Yes. Okay, I want to show you state's exhibits marked for identification 15W, 15B, 15U, 15T, 15S, 15R, 15Q, 15P, 15O, 15N, 15M, 15L, 15K, 15J, 15I, 15H, 15G, 15F, 15E.
Yes, I recognize it. It's okay. And what are they? It's photographs which we are taken during autopsy of Martin Duke. Okay. And would they uh, aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the nature of the wounds that were received by Martin Duque Aquiano? Yes. Okay. It's multiple. It's multiple gunshot wounds. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer uh, those exhibits that I read into the record. Yes. We would uh, object for some of the EMIL 12 as well as the arguments made prior to the witness taking the stand. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is that the 5D? It says 5D on the pen. Right. Is, is there another one? That doesn't have an evidence paper? It looks like this one. Maybe, yeah, maybe, it's, maybe it's a duplicate. Okay. I wasn't there. Yeah. Number 5D on it, but it does not have an evidence sticker. We have a notation of what it is. Okay, thank you. Do you have a notation of what it yes, is? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to mark it uh, 5D if that's okay. Sure. Objection 5D as in dog will be received as 116. 5, excuse me, 15E will be received as 117. 15F will be received as 118. 15G will be received as 119. 15H will be received as 120. 15I will be received as 121. 15J will be received as 122. 15K received as 123. 15L, like Larry, will be received as 124. 15M, as in Mary, 125. Fifteen N like Nancy, one twenty six. Fifteen O, one twenty seven. Fifteen P as in Paul, one twenty eight. Fifteen Q, one twenty nine. Fifteen R, one thirty. Fifteen S like Sam, one thirty one. Fifteen T like Tom, one thirty two. Fifteen U, one thirty three. Fifteen V like Victor, one thirty four and 15W-135. I'm Dr. Boyka Wilder. The clerk is, uh, you know, marking those photographs. Uh, how many entrance wounds were there to Martin Duque Aquiano? Okay. Gunshot wounds. And when you uh, were performing the autopsy, did you label the wounds? 
Yes. And why do you do that? To describe these wounds and to see it just for organi organization purposes to put A, B, C. Okay. And you also label any exit wounds? Yes. What's the first thing you do uh, during an autopsy? First name? What's the first thing you do? First, we have, I perform external examination of the body. And then, and, and then what? And after that, during this examination, I describe all these wounds which I found on the body. And after that, I perform autopsy, internal examination of the body, and see what is direction of these wounds. Okay. And injury from these wounds. Okay. You just can wait a second. I'll go over these uh, wounds with you. Doctor, uh, first I'd like to show you uh, States Exhibit 116. Is that Martin Duque Aquiano that you performed an autopsy on? Yes. Okay. And, uh, let's, uh, since you labeled uh, the wounds, i um, like to go over um, wound A, which is uh, reflected on photograph 119. Is that your wound A? You label that A? Yes. Okay. Do you uh, want to describe that to us and 
what the results of your examination were? It's entrance gunshot wound on the right cheek of decedent. Okay, and the path of the projectile? Path of projectile, it came through the mandibula, through the tongue, and exit on the left upper chest, through the neck, and exit on the left upper chest. Uh, what is assured skin abrasion? Abrasion means, means uh, superficial scrapping of the skin, and when you see abrasion around the wound, it's marginal abrasion, we call it entrance wound. When bullet coming through the body, it makes scrapping of the skin, it's marginal abrasion. Okay, and I'm going to now show you state's exhibit marked 120, it's labeled B. Yes, B is exit wound located on the la left side of the chest. And you, you see this track of the bullet Doctor, through, through the neck. Know, we can put up uh, for tell it. you can mark on the screen. <coughs> Ian, could you help him with that? Justin Stephen gives. Okay. Yes, you can see this track of the bullet coming from the right cheek through the mouth, through the bones, through the left clavicle, and exit here. Okay. And you label that A and B. That's the Correct. B is the exit wound of A, correct? Yes, B is exit wound. Okay. Now I will show you State's Exhibit um, marked 121, Dr. Boyko. And you have that labeled C and D. Yes. Erase. I don't know who's in charge of erasing the mark. That's I am. Okay. okay. I'm not doing a good job. I, I mean, I don't know whose computer is controlling that. Oh. It's, it's erased. It's erased. I erased it. Okay. Okay. Just one minute. No, I forgot. Penetrating gunshot wound of the right side, side of the chest is marked by C. Penetrating means that bullets just came to the body and it's recovered from the body. Perforating means through and through. You have entrance and exit. So uh, B is penetrating gunshot wound of the chest, on the chest and it's marked with letter C. So it's entrance wound for gunshot wound B. And uh, did it exit or did you recover it and see? I recovered it, projectile fragment from the left side of chest. Okay. And uh, at the entrance wound C that's yes. described in exhibit uh, 121, uh, what damage did that do? It's perforate right rib number four and perforate pleura, right lung, mediastinum, left lung, and left posterior rib number six. So bullet came here and come through the chest, perforating both lung, mediastinum, and I recovered him from the left side of the chest. Okay, and uh, on the same exhibit right below gunshot wound that you labeled C, Dr. Boyko, is... Uh, a wound labeled D. Yes. It's next gunshot wound is C, but entrance wound is D. It's penetrating gunshot wound of the right side of the chest also. So it's two entrance C for second gunshot wound, which mark B. And D is let's let's mark it numbers. First, to the right cheek was number one gunshot wound. Second, which C is number two gunshot wound. And D, number three gunshot wounds. So entrance wound is D on the right side of the chest. 
bullet perforates the rib, also lung, and I recovered is from the right side of the from the right side of the chest. Okay. And what damage did the gunshot wound do? do? Perforation of the right lung and ribs. And also diagram diagrams and liver. So it came down direction was through the lung and through the through the liver. Okay. Uh, doctor, I noticed if in gunshot wound in gun gun gunshot C and gunshot D, uh, they appear different than the gunshot wound to uh, his right cheek. Did you notice how it goes in? Is there a um, medical explanation yes. for that? Sometimes uh, entrance wound has small marginal abrasion, like you can see on the first wound, which was on the right cheek. Uh, these two entrance wounds on C and D has some short, ab short abrasions. They call it short, but it's uh, uh, like short. And it's because bullet was caused by tight closing and bullet perforating uh, closing makes abrasion, more large abrasion on the body by itself. But it's entrance wound still. Okay. And now, Dr. Boyko, I'd like to show you Stacy exhibit um, marked 122, and it's labeled M. Can you see that, Doctor? Yes. Okay. Erase that. So, it's number four gunshot wound, entrance wound M. It's perforating gunshot wound of the left side of lower torso. This wound perforates uh, abdominal wall, peritoneum, intestine, left kidney, and exit on the left side of lower back. So exit wound mark letter N. Okay. And uh, states exhibit marked 123, and you have it labeled... N. Yes. Is that, what is that? It's, it's exit wound for number four. Okay. And what damage did uh, gunshot wound four or gunshot wound M do? Yes, it perforates intestine and left kidney and left posterior rib number 11, because perforation of the intestine and left kidney is hemorrhages consistent with okay. this wound. Okay, now I want to show you uh, state's exhibit marked 124, and you have it labeled E. Can you see that, Doc? Yes. Okay, what is that? It's entrance wound for gunshot wound number five already. It's located on the right arm, and it has also this short abrasion, more a lar large one. And this perforating gunshot wound, it has exit wound on the anterior medial surface of the right forearm. So this wound perforates muscles of the right arm, multiple muscles, and exit. So associate injuries include muscular, intramuscular hemorrhages of the right arm. Okay. And uh, you said it exits, and I'll show you state's exhibit marked uh, 125. Yes, exit mark like letter F, it's exit of the wound. Okay. And uh, why, uh, can you explain why that exit wound is so large compared to the entrance wound? Yes, because uh, it's high velocity uh, 
gunshot wounds, and when it's high velocity, it uh, causes tumbling of the bullet with, with, with contact with soft tissue, and bullets start to tumbling and cause such a large exit wound. And I want to show you uh, state's exhibit now, uh, 126. And I, you have it labeled gunshot wound G. Yes, it's entrance wound on the right forearm. And this bullet perforates muscles of the right forearm, bones like ulna and radius, and exit on anterior surface of right forearm. Exit will mark with letter H. Okay. Now showing you state's exhibit 127. And is this the exit wound that you're talking about marked H? Yes, it's exit wound. Okay, again, that appears a much larger exit wound than the entrance wound? Yes, and in this particular gunshot wound, it's perforate both bones of the forearm, ulna and radius, so it's fragment of these bones also cause some, some uh, wounds when it's coming out from the body. It's like small projectiles became, because bones broken and became some part particles, some parts of the bones also. Like, you, you can see it's around the wound, small wounds. So it's probably from bone fragments or bullet fragments, which perforate the bones, okay. fractured the bones. All right, I now show you stakes exhibit marked 128, and you have it marked I. It's perforating gunshot wounds of the left forearm. Perforating exit wound is on the lateral midline of the left forearm. So this wound perforate muscles of the left forearm and cause intramuscular hemorrhages. And it exits? Exit mark with letter J. Okay. Showing you state's exhibit mark 129. Yes, that's exit one. Is, is that the exit from yes. I? Okay. And uh, showing you uh, gunshot wound that you labeled K in state's exhibit uh, 130. Could you tell us what K indicates? It's perforating gunshot wound of the left hand. Okay. It's entrance wound. Wound and perforates it... tissue of the left hand. And bones, number one, number four. And exit on the, it's letter L. It's exit on the left hand lateral midline of the left hand. Okay, showing you state's exhibit 131. Yes, it's exit wound. Is that is that the exit wound? Yes. Okay, again, that appears to be much larger than the entrance wound. Yes, because bones are fractured and bullets probably were stumbled. What, what is a uh, defensive wound? We call it classically wounds which you find on the extremities, on the hands and legs. We call it defense type of wounds because a person try to protect more vital organs like head and torso with extremities, with hands or with legs when they in lying position. So just for, by definition, uh, wounds on the hands and legs we call defense types of wounds. Would uh, state's exhibit mark 130 that you just talked about, K, is that 
indicative, in your opinion, of a defensive wound? Yes, because it's on the hand, on the arms, looks like person tried to protect himself with hands. And it exits it out, right? Yes. Okay. okay. And I want to show you um, Station Exhibit 132. Uh, what, what is that, Doctor? It's projectile fragment. And was recovered during autopsy from the body. Okay, and uh, also Stacy Exhibit Mark 133. Yes. And you have that marked liver. Yes, it was recovered from the liver, this fragment, projectile fragment recovered from the liver during autopsy. And why is it so small? Because it was uh, for high velocity projectiles, usually when they strike the bones, they just uh, blow up and on, on small fragments. And these fragments cause injury more dangerous because it's injured different organs. So this projectile fragment was recovered from the liver. Okay. And I'll show you also Stacey Exhibit Mark 134. Yes. It's also projectile fragment. <coughs> okay. And, and this is from, from Martin Duque Guiana, correct? Yes. And 132. Yes. And you go ahead, I'm sorry. There's fragments which was recovering during autopsy. Okay. And what was, uh, Dr. Boyko, what was the cause of death? Cause of death is multiple gunshot wounds. Which of the eight gunshot wounds would have been, in your opinion, fatal in and, in and of themselves? One is to the head and neck, uh, to the torso, to the chest, because it's perforating lungs and liver and cause extensive <coughs> bleedings. Uh, Wounds to the extremities contributed also to the death because it caused bleeding, extensive bleeding. But the most, the most little it's to the head and to the torso. Do you, do you have an opinion as to how long Martin Duque Aquiano would have lived before he would have died of these wounds? A couple of minutes. Okay. And let me show you State's Exhibit 135, Doctor. Tell me what that is. Yes, you can see on it's it's an X-ray which was taken from the body, and this X-ray shows these small fragments. This one, this one, this one, all these small fragments. It's fragments of the projectiles in the body. As I said, when it's high velocity, it's usually striking the bones and disappear and blow up for this disintegrated for small fragments and you see these small fragments sometimes we call it snow snow storm because it's like small fragments everywhere so i recovered the largest fragments from these projectiles Based on your autopsy, uh, Dr. Boyko, were you able to tell uh, if any of the wounds were post-mortem or were they all anti-mortem, meaning before death and after death, obviously? Well, I think all wounds were anti-mortem because it was bleeding everywhere. When wound is post-mortem, you don't see bleeding. And all these wounds was this hemorrhagic projectile tract. So it's on the more than before this. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me just collect these.